Hi, this is Michael, KD8TUT, and this is Meanwhile in the Ham Shack. And uh, it is the most badly lit, underproduced video podcast in ham radio. And we're very proud of that because I like my light. Um, today's uh, a really cool thing. If you're into software-defined radio and uh, you've been following the Open HPSDR projects and you follow the ANN radios and uh, that sort of thing, you probably know that there's a new firmware uh, called the New Protocol Firmware and a new bunch, uh, a new piece of software called Thetis. Uh, and the two of them together create a new platform for these radios, uh, giving the older radios that support the new firmware a jump ahead in capability like my NN100D and bringing these capabilities also to new radios that may come out in the future and I think there's one coming out from Apache Labs called the 8000 DLE and uh, so I've got the software and I've got the firmware and I'm going to show it to you uh, with the thing, some things I've discovered. I've spent about 24 hours with it. And when I'm through with this little video, I'm going to go ahead and flash it back uh, because obviously it's pre-beta software. I don't want to use it uh, really on the air for myself. Uh, I know the engineers that write it are testing it that way. Um, but uh, this was just a, a, a test, a, a little drive-by for me. So let's get started. So I've already got the, uh, the software launched, <clears throat> and uh, the first thing uh, that'll do is I'll go ahead and turn on the radio. And uh, you'll notice a couple of things. Let me turn the sound down on the output here. You'll notice a couple of things. Um, waterfall <clears throat> looks a little bit different. I think some of the math there was changed around. Uh, also, uh, I'm, I'm using one of the stock themes. Uh, the other themes that I have seem to work, the ones that I've written, so that's good. So I can make the radio look, or make the radio interface look like uh, the radio I'm used to using. And there's a bunch of different stuff that's changed that you just can't see. It's the trusty Power SDR interface, but under the hood has changed significantly. Um, so I'll go into the settings. And this screen is probably familiar to most people. Um, pick your radio. And uh, the, what's missing is the disable pure signal here and the limit stitched receivers because you don't have to limit stitched receivers any longer. And uh, everything else looks pretty much the same. And uh, you will notice here that uh, I'm using an NI100D, which is the Angelia board. Uh, and uh, version 11.3 which is a new protocol firmware and uh, I'll go to the f uh, the firmware stuff there's the dither and random options but here is a little bit different now when you're setting sample rates uh, on here for receive one and receive two you can go <laughs> all the way up to 1500k and that's a lot and uh, so what you're doing there is right now, you know, one of the advantages here is that I'm running 192K on both receivers. Let's go to 40 because this is a good example. And I'll zoom out as far as I can. So here's the band edge at 7.3 megahertz. And if I move to the other end of the band, go down in frequency, I'm, I'm covering a lot of real estate here, right? So I, I really can't see the whole band. All right. Now, if I go to 384 as my sample rate, now, well, let's see, maybe I need to power cycle. 384, 384. Oh, that's why it switched over to Gen. My mistake. Okay, so now we're on the 40 meter band, and if I zoom out, voila, I can now see everything uh, across the band, the whole band, which I think is 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 pretty cool. Now uh, there's a there is a downside to uh, to that is that you're moving more data into the computer, so. I'm going to go ahead and open up the task manager. We're going to take a look at performance. 
and uh, my Ethernet uh, is moving uh, 11.4 megabits out and 21 megabits in. So if I open up receiver 2, I now have 40 megabits coming in and 11.4 megabits going out. And let's go to 768 on both of them. And we're still on 40 meters. Now on 40 meters, we're getting well, we're getting a 40 meter band plus a lot of bandwidth above and below. And now I'm looking at 79 megabits receive and 11 megabits out. Uh, so let's take both receivers to 1500K. Now you can see that the uh, <laughs> the band has shrunk. Now this is the 40 meter band from here to here. So you're seeing all of this plus all that extra bandwidth. Now if you look, uh, you've got a total of 156 megabits uh, coming in and 11.4 megabits going out. There is also a consequence here, too, because if you look at my CPU, uh, it's at 58%. Uh, and I'd say about 15% of that is my encoding software. Uh, my encoding software that I'm using to create the video uh, actually takes most of the coding over to the GPU uh, before it writes it to disk. So I'm really not using processor for this. Um, a lot of processor, probably about 20% of the processor. But if you take a look at the processor utilization on the right side of the page here, uh, this is an 8-core processor running at 4.7 gigahertz. It's not the fastest 8-core processor out there. In fact, most people consider it a dog, but uh, uh, it, it's, fa it's, it's, it's roughly equivalent to a core I, uh, an older Core i7. And... Um, if I take the sample rates back down to where you would do it under the old style power SDR, uh, you'll notice that my processor utilization has fallen drastically. So you will burn more processor at higher bandwidths. Um, really, the utility for most hams is going to be uh, running at 384 uh, K sample rate because you can get the whole band in on something like 40 uh, or over here on 80 get close to the whole band in. Um, certainly not on 20. Close, yeah, yeah, you can get it. You can get the whole band in on 20. So I think most people will run 384 or, or 768. But seeing the whole band within the pan adapter on this software is not necessarily uh, the most important uh, item on the list because there's some there's another feature here which is the wideband monitor and uh, so you can literally look at this and be able to see up and down the bands as to uh, you know where the where the activity is so uh, you know here's 10 megahertz here's 20 megahertz so you're, we're seeing activity here uh, we're not seeing a lot of activity above that. This is probably noise. Um, so you do get uh, you do get some additional benefit uh, being able to see things in the wideband. Uh, but here you've got the whole band. So that's 20 meters, and there's 40 meters. 80 at 384, not quite, but close. Um, so that's pretty useful. In practice, when I've been playing around with this, the audio is just as excellent as the other uh, Power SDR. And I, I run a 24-bit audio chain. Uh, I run a 20, uh, 24-bit audio chain at uh, uh, 48 kilohertz. So, and I also happen to use direct sound. Uh, occasionally use AISO. I have those capabilities, but uh, I use direct sound into uh, a cheap mixer voice meter and I use this for bussing around audio to wherever it needs to go so that's interesting um, things that aren't working 
Uh, I did do some transmitting with it. It talks fine. I didn't do any digital with it. Um, I didn't get much more de uh, detailed with it than setting it up, uh, using it, uh, making sure that audio would function properly. Uh, and uh, I was happy with its operation. Uh, the reason that I'm going to flash back, because I can live with all kinds of bugs uh, that aren't showstoppers, but the big showstopper is that uh, phasing is not working. Um, uh, in fact, uh, using it repeatedly and making changes has caused, has caused the software to, um, to crash. So that's one problem that they're probably working on. And remember, this is pre-beta software, so the fact that it's up and running at all is, is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, and the other one, which was the linearity stuff for PureSignal, there's, there's a new interface for that. And um, I didn't spend a whole heck of a lot of time with it, but it is streamlined uh, and simple, and I didn't get around to using it. But this is the new interface for that. So, what we're getting in this new software is uh, huge revisions under the hood. Uh, I noticed that the audio latency, even in this earlier stage, was, was a lot less. Uh, in unscientific tests of using MON and that sort of thing um, while transmitting into a dummy load. Uh, and also monitoring the system, the signal off of a shortwave receiver while listening to it. There was, uh, I could hear less latency with uh, the radio running. Uh, one of the other things that is uh, sort of interesting, oh, I got the wrong button, is uh, it, it sounds like with the new firmware that the fan <laughs> on the radio is running faster. Um, and I'm going to assume that's because the FPGA, FPGA is on higher load, so the firmware bumped the speed up. Um, it sounds that way. Now, I could be wrong. I didn't get in there and actually test it. I'll try to figure it out when I flash it back and see if it actually does uh, turn slower. But all in all, um, you know, this, this looks like a win to me. Uh, it is a tremendous update for... Uh, you know, it's a, it's a it's a it's a tremendous update for existing uh, Apache radios that can leverage this, uh, and uh, it's a, a new set of capabilities that'll be baked into the new radio, the 8000 DLE, and then all the open HPSDR designs uh, for hardware uh, or whatever pieces of hardware that the software will actually support. Um, they're going to have these capabilities as well. And so I really, I'm really kind of excited about this. Anyway, those are just some real basic things that I found playing with this. And uh, I know it's not that detailed. Uh, I've only made a couple of contacts with this, played around with it a little bit. Um, but the results have been fairly good. And uh, this is far more functional than I would expect it to be at this point in development. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael, KD8TUT. This has been, meanwhile, in the Ham Shack and Thetis. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you guys again with something else down the road. Bye now.